We've always been a race of traders. It is natural for us that we should trade the fighting skills of our brotherhoods. As well as bringing us a profit, it also allows our youngsters to gain experience and honor and to keep alive the skills of which our strongholds may one day need for their own defense. Other than the Imperium. Now be heretic. Your kind were eaten by Tyranids. In the name of Terra, I demand you immediately cease this impertinent practice of existing. Feeling for existing here in your orbit? Let's see how your grown treats us. Hey guys, NK here, and today we're going over the last main faction in Warhammer 40k, the Leagues of Votan. The Leagues are technically the only playable non-imperial and non-chaos human faction in the setting. They're basically space dwarves and they're awesome. The kin, as they are called, live in the galactic core. Their ancestors left Terra to venture there for some reason and stayed for thousands of years. While the Imperium and even GW regard the kin as Xenos, they're actually not Xenos. They're mutants and technically clones. They genetically modified themselves mostly in order to survive and thrive in the environment they live in. And they aren't clones in the traditional sense. They're created via mixing various DNA and other genetic material. The kin are genetically modified to have rock hard skin. They're shorter to take up less space in ships. They even use genetic manipulation to create Grimnir. Grimnir are basically pseudo psychers who don't attract any attention from warp entities. There are also the Iron Kin. The existence of the Iron Kin disproves the theory of AI being destined to turn against organic life. The Kin have been treating the Iron Kin as one of their own for thousands of years, to the point where they would never leave an Iron Kin behind when they're in danger. Papa. Uh, am I a real boy? <laughs> uh, 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 well, uh, of course, my son. Why would you think any different? Well, I, I first began to suspect I wasn't like the other kids from an early age, on account of the fact that I don't have any f limbs. <laughs> oh, come on, you're just being self-conscious. I have a wrench for a foot, father. The interesting thing about the kin is that they are diplomatic almost as much as the Tau. While they probably won't ask you to be their ally, they will ask you to be their trade partner if you have something they want. However, if you refuse or the trade doesn't go well in their favor, they will declare war on you. What matters to the kin are profit, the bottom line, as well as the protection of the Votans. What are the Votans? They're basically supercomputer STCs. The kin heavily depend on the Votan for their survival, even going as far as to sacrifice themselves in order to protect it. But the problem is that the Votan are slowly dying. The kin try their best to counteract this, with one of their methods being, now this may seem weird and messed up, but the kin do this as a form of recycling genetic material, as well as uploading the consciousness of the dead to the Votan, giving it more experience so it could turn out greater technology. This is also why the kin live their life to the fullest. So then that way, when they die, they can join their ancestors in the Votan, as well as empower the Votan. When a Votan dies, that is essentially the end for the League. Their technology begins degrading and they turn out worse and worse clones. Such is the example with the Iron Head Prospectors on Necromunda. But it is possible for the inverse to happen. When High Fleet Behemoth first arrived in the galaxy, they encountered a League. Now, the League tried their damnedest to defend the Votan no matter what, to the point where they all died defending it. However, as a massive middle finger, the Tyranids didn't even bother glancing at the Votan. Nope, they came here for the kin and the genetic material. 
and they left. With no one around to maintain the Votan, it slowly started going insane. And to this day, all kin are warned to stay away from this world that the Votan is on. The leagues of Votan have uh, an interesting relationship with, it, with some of the factions. First, we'll start with the Imperiums. For the most part, the Imperium despises the leagues, believing them just to be Xenos. While the leagues just, for the most part, try to keep the Imperium from realizing how technologically advanced they are. Specifically, keeping the Mechanicus from figuring this out. Because remember when I mentioned that the Votan are, you know, STCs? Yeah. If the Mechanicus found out, they will muster all their fleets and go on a crusade against the leagues. This is also why the leagues hide the Ironkin as well, since, you know, humanity is not quite fond of AI. Hey, you better not be talking to any sentient robots down there! Uh, no sir, just telling this bucket of bolts to hurry up with me or... But, uh, hey, Papa! Hurry up! Yeah, so treat me like an equal. Harumph! You'll never catch me fraternizing with abominable intelligences. Now come along, boys, time for walkies. Next up are the orcs, and well, oh boy, the leagues despise the orcs, and it's pretty obvious as to why. Fun fact about the kin, they are slow to anger, but when they get angry, oh lord, oh no, no one can save you now. The kin have their own version of crusades called grudges. Basically, they forsake their cold and calculating tactics to just wipe out the enemy, and I'm not surprised if orcs are at the top of their grudge list. Next are the Eldar, and unlike most fantasy settings, the relationship between the kin and the Eldar is, um... Alright, listen to me, you knife your piece of shit. If you go any further with your piss stained pubic out of your cola wig, I'm gonna wreck your shit so hard that you won't even be able to walk with your limp dick. I'm gonna shove my foot so far up your shave and perfect little ass that your breath is gonna smell like shoe polish. Then I'm gonna take that little red anal bead on your belt and push it in your face. I'm gonna flagellate you with my fucking beard. I'm gonna build you a pair of runic mechanical balls and use surgical precision to sew them to your groin where your manhood ought to be just so that I can kick them with my iron fucking feet, you twat. I'll just walk around the mountain then. Ah, oh, no, you fucking elves had no honor, no respect, no beer. Goodbye, dwarf. Goodbye. Have a great day. It's not perfect, but at least they don't outright despise each other. Sure, the kin are, are greatly annoyed by the Eldari's arrogance, but yeah, you know they make good trade partners, so... The Jukari, eh, yeah, no, everyone hates the Jukari. The Necrons, they are fascinated, but also don't like them. The Kin would encounter the Necrons a few times when they were mining on Necron Tomb Worlds. The Kin have both hatred and respect for the Tyranids, much how like a hunter would respect an incredibly intelligent predator. Next up is Chaos, and they are disgusted with Chaos. They don't hate it as much as the Imperium does, but they're just baffled as to why anyone would sign their soul to the forces of hell. But as long as chaos doesn't get in their way, they're willing to let bygones be bygones. And then lastly are the Tau. The kin, relatively speaking, have a great relationship with the Tau. And remember in the Tau video that I mentioned the Demarung? Yeah, the Demarung Brotherhood are a league, and they, you know, trade with the Tau and even gave them ion technology. I think the Votan fit perfectly into this chaotic galaxy. This beautiful, beautiful, chaotic, hellish galaxy of Warhammer 40k. But now that we got all the main factions out of the way, what is there to talk about next? I guess we'll have to see next time. Anyways, I've been NK. Leave a like, comment, subscribe, all that stuff, and I'll see y'all next time. Bye.